show you how to uh, rebuild the gin cutter if you've taken it apart. These are the parts you'll see. A couple of the optional parts are included. Start with the uh, the main body here, and the base. What we'll find is that the base, and the main body, slide right into each other. You know, line the installation hole up with the body. the main rail, which is used to set the primary pivot point. It's also a dovetail slide. It slides right through the body. You'll notice there's a slot down here, and a hole through the base and the body. And they line up with this lead nut. There's a flat on the lead nut there. That lines up with the slot so you can insert it easily. Just wiggle that down, it drops into place, and you can take the lead screw and slide it in. All right, just as we slid it in this far, I'm gonna show you how we can um, put the installation bolts in, just like that. And slide them over here, slide it around. Installation bolt. These are 6M for the Sieg uh, C4 lathe. And this is a direct compound replacement, so it bolts on the exact same way. These are shoes, and they go and grab the dovetail stud that's captive in the middle. And as you see, you can, every, everything as you tighten it all up, the whole thing gets more secure. There's a hole that goes straight through, and uh, we're going to use that to install a little brass piece that's used for a gib. And put in the main adjustment knob here, and same thing on the reverse side with the secondary just there. Alright, now I advance the lead screw. I'm going to keep it back so that you can see how you can install that where you want to have it. So you're going to back, basically take whatever nuts you have off the, the tip of the lead screw and back it out. We'll go ahead and screw that through now just so you can see how it assembles. the tool post. As you can see it's a single piece that's been milled out. It has a dovetail slide here. And there's a captive dovetail here. Use this segmented rail to grab that. There's a um, cam piece that's used to raise and lower the tool plate and also uh, lock the, uh, the cam down because it grabs and pushes through the bottom and grabs onto this. It also raises and lifts the tool plate so that you have a nice secure fit up against your So tighten it up. 
back out of it. Now this nut can go on here. Or we're lately we're using these flange nuts, which seem to to grab and hold a little bit better. The tip we could use this nut here to take out the backlash and then add a stop nut. It can also be installed in the tip. And the, and the nice thing about these is that they actually um, fit right through the dovetail slide so you can back it up a little bit. And uh, this is an E-clip. I believe it's 530 seconds. They do include a few extras in the spare bag should you drop it and do the same thing I just did there. But you can fit the E-clip on a little neck that I've uh, lathe turned into the, uh, into the end there. And then you can either put this on, or again, I, I like the, uh, the new nut just to give it some extra grab. There you go. That's how you put the dream cutter back together the way factory goes. Now, of course, you'd take this off so that you could install it. So I'm going to move the camera, and uh, we'll show you how we actually install the dream cutter typically on the mini lathe. Just clip it off. so we can see the installation screws. There we go. All right, as you can see, the traditional compound, which for reference, you might have your traditional compound mounted on there like this. So once you remove the traditional compound, you expose um, its standard mount. And uh, the dream cutter has a hole that this stud just goes on to. So you just basically... Uh, we're going to take one of the, the bolts out. And the reason why we're going to do that is so that we can rotate it. obviously aligned with this and the stud. So you push this down. Alright, tighten that down. And you can rotate it freely. So Purpose of, uh, of this is to basically set a baseline uh, for the gib to press, or for this rail to press against, and to keep this nice and centered. It's just to take any slack, maybe a hundred thou, or whatever might be in there, uh, on that dovetail slide. Also, it presses up against the brass gib that's on this side, and this is used to lock and set the angle. So this sets your baseline friction and your center. This is used to adjust the angle. Now this um, inside collar grabs and pushes against that shoe, which grabs and pushes against the stud, and the outer one is what pushes against the gib, which is the bolt that goes through, through the hole. So that's how that goes. So 
so the two of those together make you know that rail quite quite rich. Any rock in there would be on your comp so, uh, would be on your saddle and so install the dream cutter in my manual I cover how to set this up as far as centering this the axis. Um, the point there is that this axe center stuff which we will now reveal is you can see it's set up there to the zero Set for a three eighths, so three eighths and two hundred. Because um, this plate here is three quarters, so three eighths is, will have a point that's exactly centered. Uh, quarter inch tooling is nice, but you would have to shim it over an eighth. So just shim it over an eighth, get one that's on the center, and uh, when you're ready to cut balls or cups. Uh, again, once you have everything aligned to your workpiece center of axis height and uh, X. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, uh, please email me at sales.dreamcutter.com.